In this video, I'm going to talk about the picture element in HTML. So we can use the picture element in HTML to let the browser choose which image is most appropriate to display based on things like the screen width or the device orientation. And we might use this technique to load in smaller images on devices with smaller screens and larger images on devices with larger screens, which is a form of responsive design where we have the website respond to different screen sizes by displaying content differently. So we got these images here. We got this portrait image here, a landscape version of it here. And then for the landscape version, we've got a, a few different versions of it where we've got different widths of the image. So we've got one here that's 300 pixel width, one here that's 400 pixel width, and one here that has a 500 pixel width. So now that you've seen the images, these are what we're actually gonna be playing around with with the picture element. I'll just close these down. So the picture element, we're gonna use the open picture tag, and then we're gonna close the picture tag. And what we do is we provide a source tag for each possible image that we wanna show. And along with that source that we're gonna to have to provide for where the image is, we're also gonna to have to provide the rule that specifies when to display that image. So our first thing here is we'll say source, which is just the open source tag. Then we'll say SRC set, and this is how we specify the source of the image. And I'm gonna specify that smallest landscape image here. So I'm gonna say landscape underscore 300 pixel dot PNG, because that's just the file name. And then here's where I give the rule with the media tribute. So I'll say media is equal to, and I'm gonna specify a rule there that's gonna define when this image source is used. And this is actually really just CSS. And we'll talk more about CSS in other videos. I just kind of want to focus on the tag in this video. But we'll give this rule here. We'll say max width 500 pixels. And what that rule essentially means is that when the browser window or the device screen size is less than 500 pixels, display this image here. And then we're going to create similar source tags for the other images. So, and they're pretty much identical in terms of the file size and whatnot. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. So I'll say for the five, for the 400 pixel image, we're gonna have this rule. And for the 500 pixel image, we're gonna have this rule. And I'll say that, you know, here, when the browser window is less than 650 pixels, we're gonna display this image. And when it's less than 800 pixels, we're gonna display this image. And then we've got to have one more thing in here, and that's the, the catch-all case, as in the case that's going to apply if none of these rules apply. This is also the image that's going to be displayed if the browser doesn't support the picture element. And it's actually just a regular image tag. So we just say IMG SRC is equal to, and then I'll just display the full-length landscape image if we have no other rule applying. And this is also where you can give your alternative text attribute. So I'll say alt is equal to, and we'll just say like landscape and close the image tag. Now, when I do a refresh here, let's actually shorten the browser window. Let's make it small. So we'll make it pretty small here. Now, if I do a refresh, we see we've got the, we see we've got that 300 pixel version of the image being displayed because the window size here is less than 500 pixels. Now, if I were to increase the window size here in terms of its width, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go and it's gonna now display the 400 pixel version of that image. So I can go back and forth now between the two. If I keep going, the window width is gonna go beyond 650 and now it's gonna display the 500 pixel version of the image. So we just keep going here and now it goes to the 500 pixel version of the image. And if we keep going further, we're gonna get to this default case here where it's just gonna be the full blown version of the image, and we get that. And so that's just a way that we can use the picture element to decide um, which size of image to display. And that's one use case for this. Now, another use case we've got is we also have the landscape and portrait versions of the image. We can actually set rules to decide between displaying a landscape or portrait version of the image as well. And they're pretty similar to this. So we'll get rid of this and we'll just have two rules now, and we'll just, we'll just decide to load in either landscape or portrait image. So landscape or portrait. And the rules here are just written a bit differently. Here you just say orientation colon landscape, and we'll say here orientation colon portrait. 
and save it. And to, to show landscape and portrait, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I've saved this now. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to load up Chrome DevTools because I can flip around the iPad to actually have it be in either landscape or portrait orientation. So we're loaded in here. So here it is. Here's the page loaded here in the iPad uh, simulated version of the browser. And we'll rotate it with this. So we'll rotate it here to rotate it to landscape. When we rotate it to landscape, we get the landscape version of the image, rotate it back to portrait, we get the portrait version of the image. And it's because of these two rules here that we've implemented. And that's just another thing you can do with the, the picture element. So now all this said, it's actually more common to use CSS to handle responsive design like this, including manipulating things like the image size. But one of the advantages of the picture element is that the browser won't actually request and load the images until they're actually needed, which can lower the total size of your website when say you've got smaller images being served, especially if you've got lots of images on your website. So this is gonna be beneficial for mobile users with data restrictions and slower connections, for example. And that's the basics of the picture element. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.